Welcome to Total War News. My name is Cody Bonds. The Creative Assembly announced today that the upcoming Immortal Empires map release will also include updates to Game 1 and 2 races mechanics. This includes specifically updates to the Vampire Counts, Lizardmen, Dark Elves, and Norska. As expressed in their official press release, they want to relate that it is not a simple task to take a race from Game 1 and 2 and copy and paste it into Warhammer 3. Warhammer 3 is a significantly different game than its predecessors, with new mechanics, overhauled game systems, and a host of new foes to face. And because of that, they have taken the time to go back and try and polish some of the game 1 and 2 races that they felt were not quite up to snuff. First off, the Vampire Counts. Please excuse the puns in the following article, this is how they were written. Everyone's favorite bloodsuckers were in a difficult place coming out of Warhammer 2, mainly relying on a devastating two-punch combo of free skeleton armies and the evisceration of their enemy with winds of death. While it was a real power trip at the time, it did eventually get a bit bone dry. On top of that, changes to systems like the Winds of Magic and Warhammer 3 have had a heavy impact on how the race plays, so the Warhammer team has spent time enhancing the vampire counts in ways that help them stay fresh, as in slightly less smelly corpse. So basically, free skeletons are gone. You'll still have ways to make them grave dirt cheap, but not to the same extent as before. The Creative Assembly knows this is a big change and one that might disappoint many people, but it has not only distorted the Vampire Count's gameplay, but also made much of their roster obsolete, particularly in conjunction with the reduced supply line penalties in Warhammer 3. To make up for the loss though, CA has made a whole host of other changes that they hope will more than make amends for it. Here are the key changes. Across the board balance changes to the roster, leadership increases to most units, adjustments to ethereal units, and the ability to recruit more ghouls in a campaign if you own the Vampire Coast DLC. Improvements to the Raise Deadpool, which now offer better units by default and scale up with Vampire Corruption, making them less reliant on battle sites. A reshuffling of recruitment buildings, with many units now available earlier and more easily. Revamped tech tree, skill trees, and bloodline effects to give the race access to powerful new effects such as increased healing caps and extra winds of magic. For individual lords, CA has already highlighted some of the changes coming with the undead power couple Vlad and Isabella von Karsine, but Manfred and both necromancer lords will have their time in the sun or moon too. Manfred von Karstein specifically has moved to the Southlands where he now seeks the unholy books of Nagash. As the most magically gifted of the vampire lords, he also received increased magic reserves, and his Master of the Black Arts ability now boosts his skill mastery by 25%. To complement his new starting position in Distant Café in the Haunted Forests, Helmengorst now starts the campaign mounted on his corpse cart and can acquire skills that enhance his aura abilities, granting him powerful faction-wide buffs to zombies. If you want to drown the world in rotting flesh while watching them from the back of your sweet, if slightly smelly, ride, he's the legendary lord of choice. Not to be outdone by this young upstart, Kimmler has also upped his game. His best bud Krell will now be a permanent summon by default while Kimmler's skill tree serves to supercharge Krell's combat stats. The words Lizardmen and Update together will generate some excitement, so the bad news getting out of the way first, the Geomantic Web is still pretty much the same, other than a few adjustments to reward you for fulfilling the great plan. They fully recognize it's ripe for a more substantial update and hope to find an opportunity to handle that in the very near future, in a more in-depth fashion. With that said, they do still have some changes coming to our scaly friends. First, we'll start with the humble skinks. As you have long requested, Tehinoween now unlocks regiments of renown units by leveling up, and will be able to use his sacrificial pyramid to generate extra blessed spawn units. 
His chameleonic comrade, Oxyotl, will be receiving new missions to hunt down and eliminate the new demonic enemies who recently arrived on the Immortal Empire's map, and his mission durations will now scale with campaign difficulty, making it much harder to thwart chaos if you choose to play at harder levels. The stalwart Saurus will also benefit from changes that help them take on the demonic hordes in battle. Their innate Primal Instincts ability kicks in earlier, granting them greater bonuses and no longer triggering Rampage. Both Saurus characters also get revamped Lord and Faction effects to account for this in addition to helping them develop their own playstyles. Krokgar will focus on creating a coterie of elite Saurus characters, with major buffs for Old Bloods and Scar veterans, while Gorok will enjoy new effects that lean into his defensive nature. Though his unique right will no longer make Saurus units unbreakable, and will instead grant them barrier as well as immunity to hostile weapon effects like poison, a perfect boon for taking on a certain pestilent rodent near his starting position. As the premier magic wielders of the setting, the Slan, including Lord Croak, are getting skill tree tweaks to fit the new magic system in Warhammer 3, while gaining access to powerful effects like barrier and increases to their Winds of Magic capacity. On top of that, Mazamundi will also receive a whopping plus 50% range increase to all his spells, befitting for a frog of such continent-shifting power. Finally, Nakai will enjoy a variety of balance changes, including a tech tree update to boost his economy, as well as new and improved benefits upon constructing temples to the old ones. He'll also benefit from some of the fundamental improvements to diplomacy that were introduced in Warhammer 3, notably in how the AI interacts with its vassal factions. When it comes to the Dark Elves or the Druki, they were in a prime position to benefit from the new sea lanes, and also have seen big changes to their slaves mechanic. Previously, this was a feature that resulted in some very notably overpowered late-game economic performance with relatively little interaction from the player. As such, in Warhammer 3, slaves are now considered a faction-level resource, rather than something you just stash in a province somewhere. Slaves can now be spent on numerous buildings to generate income, or invested in three powerful slave diktats to benefit a specific province. For a long while now, the Druki have had a complicated relationship with Chaos, so the influx of demonic factions has led to a few notable changes. Marathi now gets unique interactions with Slanesh Corruption and can even recruit Daemonet units, while Malice's Possession ability now allows for more frequent use of Zarkan and interacts differently with the new Corruption types. Last of all, Rakarth can now capture and tame a host of new beasts, including saber tusks and feral bears. Norska is also getting another look to make them cold, angry, and ready to raid. Norska has had a somewhat tumultuous entry into the series with their unique ability to construct outposts instead of regular settlements, built on the foundation of the climate-locked occupation system of Warhammer 1. This design did not make a graceful transition into Warhammer 2, though, where it was originally designed to grant them unparalleled flexibility, instead it now made them their greatest weakness and rather brittle in campaign. So now they are a regular occupation faction, with access to their complete building tree anywhere in the world. This of course is their headline change, but there are smaller changes also coming to freshen up the race as well. Devotion to the Gods like before, players can dedicate the ruins of their enemies to one of the four dark gods in order to gain their favor, but previously there was a massive disparity in the rewards given. As such, CA has taken the time to even things out a bit. Full dedication to the crow no longer causes global plague. Rather, you'll be joined by Burble Smirk Spewpit, the exalted great unclean one. Full dedication to the Hound no longer gives you access to the Iceforge Legion, but rather has you joined by Kilgore Slaymame, an exalted hero of Korn. All reward characters will grant their army an incredibly powerful boon that twists their battle profile to align closer to the Dark God's ideal forces. For example, Azric's forces enjoy access to barriers, magical weapons, and global winds of magic generation benefits. And if you just realized that it wasn't revealed where the Iceforged Legion went, 
don't worry, your favorite Hell Cannon battery has become a regular regiment of renown in the game that unlocks when you reach the appropriate level. As they are now a fully settled faction and capable of holding complete provinces all over the world, Norska has also been given a full set of commandments to enact over each province and solidify their new holdings. When it comes to resources, that's wines, furs, and everything in between, Norska can now construct buildings to exploit almost all resources for local and global business bonuses. Capital targets are also added to the game. With the new forces of order come new cities to raise for unique benefits. The Kurgan hordes have never taken Wei Jin, but perhaps they only lack a unifying iron fist to help direct them. And at the end of the Norska section, the Total War team wanted to make sure and clarify that no, quote, this is not the Norska rework. These changes are about freeing Norska from the shackles of their outposts and giving them a taste of the fresh new powers of the Dark Gods in Warhammer 3. Like the rest of Immortal Empires, this is just the beginning of the foundation upon which to build and make future tweaks coming to the different factions soon, implying that Norska will have another update in the very near future. So what do you think about these changes? There's definitely some that have been asked for and some that, well, frankly, were not. CA has stated that they are listening to you in your opinions and what you would like to see changed, so make sure to voice them below, and I'm curious what you think about these race updates coming with the release of Immortal Empires in Warhammer 3. And as a reminder, this update is scheduled to release on August 23rd of this year. I'm Cody Bonds, and this has been Total War News. Thanks for watching.